Welcome, everyone. No. Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Well, Tracy, today we're going to talk about oral cancer, cancers of the mouth and that general area. And oral cancer usually appears as a growth or a sore in the mouth that, that doesn't go away. Oral cancers include cancers of the lips, the tongue, the cheeks, the floor of the mouth, the hard and soft palate, the sinuses, and the pharynx, or the throat. And oral cancers can be life-threatening if they're not diagnosed and treated early. The treatment of patients with oral cancer is sometimes complex and may require several different specialists. The oral surgeon, maybe a cancer specialist, and a prosthodontist, someone who can restore the teeth or part of the jaw when it's missing. Traditionally, treatment for oral cancer has first required surgery to remove the cancer, and then a separate surgery or surgeries to do reconstruction. Now, in an effort to make things easier for patients, surgeons at Mayo Clinic are removing the cancer and doing that reconstruction simultaneously during the same surgery. Yeah, pretty neat. Here to discuss is Mayo Clinic oral surgeon, Dr. Kevin Arce. Welcome to the program, Dr. Arce. It's nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you as well, and thank you for the opportunity to be here. So, Dr. Arce, you look like you've been working. Yes, I have. <laughs> so, you had a case today? Yes, absolutely. Mary's Hospital. Was it a cancer? Uh, it was a cancer reconstruction case. That's correct. So, you know, we don't too often think of cancer of the lips or the tongue or the mouth, but it's really not all that uncommon, is it? Yeah, uh, that's correct. Uh, it's a fairly common cancer, yes. Um, and which is the most common of the ones that we talked about or in this region? So, in this region, the most common would be in the tongue and the floor of the mouth uh, area. And there must be people who are at risk for these type, types of cancer? At the highest risk are uh, uh, heavy smokers, you know, would be the highest uh, at risk of patients um, that will be developing these type of cancers. Smokers more than people with that use chewing tobacco? Uh, yes, it is actually higher, even though um, chewing tobacco can be associated, you know, because of its uh, chronic irritation of the tissue, and particularly the uh, cheek area itself. But uh, smokers would be at higher risk. And how do they usually present to you? Uh, usually they present with an ulcer that doesn't uh, tend to go away. and it, uh, A sore, huh? A sore, correct. A sore that doesn't go away or a growth of sorts that the patient has noticed. And what uh, usually prompts their attention is doesn't go away and it gets bigger with time because uh, not too uncommon they don't have pain associated with the area. So they tend to think that there's nothing wrong going uh, going on. Do you, can you tell by looking that it's suspicious? Uh, yes, uh, we can tell uh, because it um, shouldn't be there uh, to start off with, and it just has some uh, appearance uh, with regards to the size, the color of it, the ulceration or the sore you know, that might be present. Those things would alert us that uh, it looks suspicious and that needs to be biopsy. I would think a sore in the mouth would be something that you notice right away, but is this something that a dentist will see before a patient notices a sore? Um, it can happen, you know, that's the case. Um, you know, at times as part of their routine, either dental evaluations or they might have, you know, what they think is a dental problem, a tooth problem, and that might be bringing up the ulcer in the area, whether it's irritation or whether it's directly related to the tooth itself. Once you see something that looks suspicious to you, how do you work it up and how do you finalize the diagnosis? Yeah, so we first do a, a thorough clinical examination and not only focus on the area uh, in question, but also at the surrounding uh, tissue, including the teeth. Uh, and then uh, once we've completed that evaluation, then uh, typically we would proceed with a biopsy when the uh, when the area has been there for an extended period of time and it hasn't uh, healed or it looks uh, clinically suspicious. How often is a mouth sore not cancerous? I would think either it's like a canker sore or a <laughs> cancer. <laughs> uh, correct. It is more common for it not to be a cancer than for it to be uh, a cancer, but they typically those resolve. And we, we use kind of a two-week rule uh, for that. So if it hasn't gone away or we haven't seen improvement uh, during at least a given period of time and long enough for it to resolve on its own, then we start uh, getting uh, concerned about what exactly is behind the, the, the sore. And then is there some imaging that you do to help you determine the extent of the disease and whether or not it has metastasized or spread elsewhere? Uh, so we do do um, imaging. Uh, we'll do a, a CAT scan or a CT scan of the uh, maxillofacial uh, region 
uh, to look at the tumor. So that's the jaw and the, of the, and jaw, the face. C- correct, of the jaw and the face. Uh, we can do also an MRI, you know, in, in some instances. And then uh, uh, we'll get a chest uh, x-ray, uh, in particular for uh, patients that are uh, heavy uh, smokers or smokers, you know, in general. And if we want to elaborate more in, in terms of spread, uh, we can also get uh, what's called a PET scan or a PET CT uh, scanned or even even uh, further imaging of the chest with a CT scan of the chest as well. Once the cancer has been diagnosed, is surgery always necessary or chemotherapy? What do you do? Uh, so for the oral cavity, the predominant uh, treatment uh, for it uh, is surgery, surgery first. And it's usually followed by either radiation or radiation and chemotherapy, depending on what the uh, tumor behavior is and the extent of the basically how invasive it is as a cancer. And also if it's found in, like for example, the lymph nodes, uh, which is also part of the, not only the evaluation, but also the treatment in the majority of patients with oral cavity cancers. Uh, Can these cancers, like most, spread in two ways, either through the lymphatics, in which case they end up in the adjacent lymph nodes, or through the bloodstream, and then they usually go to the chest? Uh, Correct, Uh, so this one is predominantly through the lymphatics. All right. And um, once you've made the diagnosis uh, and do the surgery, a fair amount of the time, it's pretty disfiguring surgery, isn't it, it? depending on the location of the tumor? Absolutely. It could be. It could be depending on the location of the tumor, depending on the extent of it as well. We have to remove um, normal structures as well as... um, uh, as the, the the tumor itself, the cancer itself. Well, then let's talk about combining those two surgeries, the cancer removal and the reconstruction into one surgery. Why was it not always just one surgery? Well, one of the aspects of it is um, the advances that have happened in particular with reconstruction and, and as such with microvascular reconstruction where can, we can bring tissues from other parts of the body and reconstruct a either a new jaw or replace tissue that has been lost in the tongue or the floor of the mouth area. And uh, with those uh, changes in reconstruction uh, and approach to it, we can do it all simultaneously. It's uh, for not only from a, from a cosmetic, from an appearance standpoint, but also from a functional standpoint as well. If you have to take out part of the tongue, there's no way to reconstruct that, is there? We we can reconstruct the loss of the the loss of the muscle itself, but we can uh, put tissue back so it minimizes scarring and it still allows the mobility and the function of the tongue to be much better. Really, mm-hmm. because that didn't used to always be the case. And so yes, and what we use is actually uh, tissue from the forearm uh, region with the associated arteries and veins. And that's how we reconstruct a new tongue or floor of the mouth area or really any tissue in the oral cavity. Pretty amazing. So uh, tell us before we finish up, uh, nobody wants to get oral cancer. Obviously, don't smoke, don't chew tobacco. What else can people do to, to try and prevent getting cancer of the mouth? From a prevention standpoint, those would be the two you know, main um, key, or, uh, key factors uh, towards it. And then it's part of the uh, screening process of the uh, semi-annual or annual evaluation. To, um, they should have a comprehensive uh, oral cavity evaluation as part of that as well. And usually that can be done by your dentist. So you need to see your dentist once or twice a year anyway, right? Correct, correct. All right, Dr. Kevin Arce, an oral surgeon at the Mayo Clinic, talking about oral cancer and reconstruction, treatment and reconstruction. Thanks so much for being with us, Dr. Arce. Thank you very much. And that's our program for this week.